Hello and welcome to Wikipedia Weekly Network here where Albin Larsson and I, Jan Einerle, are editing Wikidata Live. How are you doing, Albin? I'm doing great. We had a lovely weather today. I have, however, now taken a bit of a, a night tea. So I'm going to see how that turns out, doing that just before the stream. How are you, Jan? I'm good as well. We haven't had that good weather, but good enough for getting out. And I have been out uh, taking some photos for the iNaturalist uh, bio blitz and i i'm still a, a newbie at that so i'm still cashing in uh, new species observations every day right. so that's that's <laughs> we'll see when i start repeating myself yeah today what do we have planned for today album we have planned to show off pause uh, which is like Wikimedia. It's actually a Wiki, official Wikimedia thing. I think I first came in contact with it back at Wikimania in Sinolaria. That would have been in that five seems years. seems about right, yes. Yeah, and I think it was back then it came alive, but nowadays it's like officially maintained by the Wikimedia Foundation and such. And it's a bit of a computing environment for people who want to do things with Wikidata or things with Orchard Wikimedia data. And it's just a nice way to access like the data dumps and doing a bit of programming without actually having to install like advanced environments on your computer, like setting up a programming language on a Windows computer could be kind of tricky in my own experience. And here you can just sign in with your Wikimedia account and start doing things. And it, it's super nice. Um, yeah. And it has only improved throughout the years. Yeah, so, so today might be a little bit different. We will mostly... Uh, sort of show you the environment and then we'll show a few a little bit of tricks uh, or uh, examples of things that you can do and then I think we we'll, we we'll plan to come back next week to specifically look at open refine indeed yeah yeah so then we will go into a bit more detail and be a bit more wikidata focused for example I'm just gonna get started here I'm just gonna dip my dip my toes in pause and show you what it can do and Jan will do some more um actual editing so uh, hello Daniel. Here, hello here we got um, on this link we just got a, a bit of a general page on pause what it is um and a bunch of relevant links here which i'm, I'm gonna go into some of them but uh, that's that to begin with um i think we can actually launch it here Yes, that's the correct link. So it says sign in with MediaWiki because it's a tool. AIC, let's see here. This actually wants to log in with my, my regular account because pause is like a computing environment where I usually do rather technical edits. I will actually just quickly switch here to my bot account because what I do is, there we go. And we got a server error, of course, today. <laughs> Let's see if we can reload that. I, um, I think there's always, if we get all server errors, we're in trouble for this. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to try with my, oh, here yeah. it is. Yes. Uh, this actually happened to me earlier to do as well. Sometimes I just needed to go to the same URL twice to really yeah. get it to start up. Um, that, that happened to me too, but I have usually get like some message like butterfly has not started yet. Yeah. And then I just reload and it usually uh, works. So if you if you c come into any sort of trouble like that, just try to reload it and it might just magically work. Yeah. So this is what it looks like. But if you would be here for the first time, you it might be that you don't have any files here or folders. Um, but I actually want to like open one of this. I think this one, for example, is quite recent Wikidata one. Just show you what you actually get access to here. So there I'm installing someone, but this is essentially programming and it's like Python programming. I import a CSV file. I set up some libraries. I look up something somewhere and here I make a CSV file which I then, I think, imported into quick statements. And I did like the data preparation here um, from an API and such. So I'm just gonna, you can do Python programming here and there's a bit of tutorials on how to do that and such. 
I'm gonna close down this one and just show you how to create one of these. So I'm gonna say, I want to create something with Python free. I just select it there and here I can say, print, uh, let's say hello in here. So here I indirectly in my web browser wrote out installing anything. I can do like programming here. I could access the Wikimedia dumps um, and do a ton of things. So I could issue SparkQL, I could issue SQL towards the dumps and such. Um, and you can actually do quite a bit of things here. So I could, for example, go into something called SparkQL. So just like the, the Wikidata query editor, I can issue SparkQL here and kind of save it like a file. So if I, I think this is also a super nice way to share a bunch of SparkQL you make. So if I write the SparkQL query, let's select. It isn't as nice when it comes to auto completion as the query.wikidata.org, but it's still very nice. Um, so, and you auto complete here with tab instead of something else. Let's select P31 for instance of, let's select, I got something lying around here. That's good QID, let's put that in there. So that would be ministers of Sweden or in Sweden. Um, we can run this, let's see what happens. It says that we didn't specify an endpoint. And that's because this can work with any Spark L query. So I actually need up here to say endpoint. And here I actually need to point to the Wikidata Spark L endpoint. But it's important to note if you're super common or commonly use just a query editor, that that endpoint in the URL up there is not the actual SparkL endpoint. That's just the just UI for the SparkL endpoint. The actual endpoint is at https at query.wikidata.org slash SparkQL. And I should spell that correctly. And let's make a line break here. And if I run that, I get a response here. So I got 14 and I could add the label here and label service and so on. But the, the very nice thing about this is that I could, can create another cell as it's called here and drop this in here, run that one as well. And I could maybe use the common SparkL query for one of these and I could change out the query and just have a collection here. And then I could click here the public link and I could share this with someone. So here is my collection of SparkQL queries for querying, I don't know, pandas or ministers of Sweden for being an example, both on common, so a mix. So you can kind of share a set of queries, which is really handy, I believe. And then someone could like paste them into the query editor anyway. So that, that's a really nice feature of this. Um, another thing, you can do so you can also like when you do like programming which i showed earlier you can do kind of like uh, you can query with uh, something like PyWikiBot you might have heard of which is like a framework for making bots on wikidata or on what's your wiki projects so let's see if we got one of those um i think this one should be an example of using PyWikiBot. yes so I say import PyWikiBot, I import a couple of water stuff. And I set a couple of things. I have a, a CSV file with like uh, descriptions of Gotland. So Gotland is an island more often than it's a region. And it would in Sweden matter if you put it, if it's in Gotland or on Gotland. So this was essentially a script to, to change that. And I can use PyWikiBot to to make such edits. Um, and this might all seem a bit over your head, which completely makes sense. Uh, and therefore, I'm gonna head over to tool. No, not tool for, what do we call it? Uh, Wikitech. I'm gonna head over to the Wikitech and pause again. So Wikitech is a, it's a side wiki, which is 
slightly different actually from the Watcher wikis. It, I think it still uses, for example, a different account and such. You have a pre another account for it. But if we go down here to a bit of more information on Pulse, we can see in something called example notebooks. And this is a page I really wanted to highlight because this is super useful if you if you're new to this, but you still want to get started, maybe run something else someone else has made and edit it just like we do with queries. We take someone else's query and we change a couple of things to learn stuff, to explore new stuff. We can do the same with this kind of uh, notebooks as it's called, like code. Like you might not be able to understand what it says here, but you are able to understand the specific part of it, which you can switch out like a queue number or something like that. And this essentially, contains a, a large set of queries that are examples for how to work with different things. And they are tagged with tutorial, API, wiki replicas, data dumps, research, and so on. So this is super useful. So for example, we would click on this uh, working with wiki replicas and data sets. Um, so if I could click on this, it would like show me one of those notebooks where I could copy things. And the ones that are highlighted in this list, which you find on this URL here, is usually super good. So this, for example, has a ton of like comments and descriptions and so on. And if I, for example, if I create a new cell here, we can actually, another good thing, let's say we want to have a nice explanatory thing about this, but we, we can't, we don't want to put it into Sparkle Commons because we want headers, links, and that type of stuff. We can actually write really nice markup here. And let's see, can we create a link as well? Yes, we can. I think this should. So this should create a header. We should have a paragraph here with a link in it. And if I just click cross pin Control enter, we can do this as well. We can add images here and all kinds of just regular things. So you can kind of create this like documents with interactive SparkQL. So you could share this with someone and then they have a bit of an instruction here and you can run this. So you can make like an interactive SparkQL tutorial if you would like to. Um, that just got me a ton of ideas. Um, but similarly, this, this list is just full of it. Here is how to work with like the, the page view data, um, which Wikimedia has. So it actually had got a database which for all the page views or even item views on Wikidata. And here is how you can explore how to analyze it and just visualize it. Um, we got some about querying with SQL. So you might be familiar with querying Wikidata with SparkL but you can also query it with something called SQL. Um, here is how to visualizing Wikipedia topics. Not gonna show it, but just full of super cool things. Here is just querying Wikidata with SparkQL. Um, then it got a ton of sections for various things, working with APIs, um, PyWikiBot. Yeah, this this list with PyWikiBot, it's got a ton of examples. Um, so even if you're just getting started with programming, this is actually the kind of environment I've used like professional when teaching programming. So this is a great way to get started and you can do that without much background knowledge, in my opinion. Heading back over to, to pause here. Um, you can actually do more than use this type of Python notebook here. You can create folders and such, but I also want to, you can create something like R. So this is a different programming environment, which they also give you access to in pause. So in that previous one, we wrote Python. Here we can write the program called R. Uh, sadly, my knowledge of R is a bit limited, but I can, there are shortcuts. I didn't want to trigger that. I can still make a Hello World program because it's quite equal to the one in Python. So I write print, I'm pretty sure, doing this, this from memory and say hello. And it will, it will run R. 
And it, it's just an order super powerful thing. And it also got Uber fine. I'm going to leave that out. But it got something called Air Studio as well, which makes it even more powerful. This is again, uh, this is, let's see, I'm going to wait until it loads. This is a full blown like development environment for writing R. So here I got a terminal, which I should be able to print R in as well. It got the function called license, it turns out. Let's see what that runs. It just prints the license here. Print, print hello world, hello. And it runs it there and we can work with files and all kinds of stuff. We can make plots here, we can debug things, we can profile our code, kind of see what parts of code is working well and such. And this is just a completely full-blown environment which people usually run it on their desktops, but you can actually use it completely for free here on pause if you're working on Wikimedia projects. It's just a super nice resource. And I said, even if you aren't into programming, it, it's a super way to get started. We got Uber and Fine here as well, as I mentioned. We got a good old terminal. So this is kind of like a desktop desktop computer, we can create a new folder on files here. So I can create a folder. It should have created an untitled folder. I can go into the, that. We can create a file here, text file, which I'm going to call untitled.txt and say hello. In. I can go here and click save. That should be saved. We should be able to create a terminal here, here now, just like on my regular Linux or Windows or Mac computer. And now we are in here. And I let's see if we can see the into untitled. Uh, can we get a tab there? Nope. It untitled folder. Is it an underscore here? No. Let's do ls then. I can list my files. I should very much be able to go into that folder. Let's see, does it show up here? Yes, to the right. To the right. Untitled folder. Oh, I need to write it with quotes here. So cd, let's see if I can paste that in. Paste is one of those things that is a bit tricky here. I can be in that folder. I can run an ls here and see my untitled file. I can run cat, untitled, and it will print the contents of that file and so on. And you can just write all kinds of things here. And I think John, in just a moment, will actually show a little bit about how we can use the terminal and also reuse programs which other people have been writing. So I could write something for this environment. I could share it with you, and you, without programming knowledge, could go in here. I run that program. And I think with that, I'm going to leave it to Jan because he right. can show something like that. Yes. So that was very nice setting up there. And now I'm going to show, well, I'm going to share my screen. And I think I'll, I'll share my full, wait, do I? No, let me un make this a little bit nicer for you to watch and just share the no, wait, <laughs> I'm changing my mind again. I'm going to share my whole screen because I realize I'm going to switch windows and then I'm going to forget it later on. And then you will see only what I started sharing and not what I'm talking about. Let's do it like this. All right. So I'm going to show you a tool that is, uh, you could run locally on your own computer, but you can also run it in pause, uh, which is very nice because it's sort of set up nicely uh, for that. And uh, the tool uh, I'm going to show is one that called Item Subjector. Uh, and I'll see if I have the name here so you can follow along if you want to do it. Uh, and what it does, it helps you add uh, main subject to scientific articles or Swedish parliamentarian documents. And of course, it's the latter that gets me excited, but you might be more excited about uh, scientific uh, articles. Uh, 
So that's what it's going to do. And here is the actual like the workflow. But what I'm going to show you mostly today is how to get it started, uh, because it's a little bit of a setup. But I think it the the actual instructions are good enough so that anyone can do it. And after setting it up, which it is a few steps, but you don't really need to do programming for for running in this. So it's and, and you will show all of them. Yes, I will show all of them. So you start by going to this source on GitHub, and I preloaded that here. Let me zoom in a little bit. This takes you to uh, 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 essentially where the the software is. And I'm going to stop showing this item subjector here. And it has these very nice instructions here. These instructions are super clear for someone who knows what GitHub is. But it may, if you haven't done it, you will have to follow along with me here now carefully. So, because the first instruction here is clone the repo and run, which is a very shortcut for a few steps. So, so we're going to try to do that. And before going into that, uh, we'll head over to the URL that Alvin showed you before. I'll show it again here hub.pause to actually log in. And I'll sign in. And I'll use, I'll see if I can use a, a, a dummy account so I can do this from start. I don't, I'm not sure. Yes, I was already with my dummy account here. So that's good. Uh, and I'll allow it. And it's starting up the pause here. And I should get something that is totally empty, uh, which is different from what uh, Alvin just showed you. Yes. So here you see the notebook list is empty. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more here so you have a chance to see. And I'm going to start uh, by firing up the terminal, because that's what we're going to need. So and this is a little bit tricky. I, I found, found it a little bit tricky uh, from an interface. Why? Because this seems to be the very most central thing in, in, in pause. It, new. You start something new. That's where you launch things. But it's hidden to the right a little bit there. So uh, I would want this to be the big start button if you are in Windows. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm going to click the terminal here. And we will open up a new tab and give us a, a clean, empty terminal number one, as you can see in the URL. Uh, and that's, I wonder if I can zoom in one more time to make it better for you. Yes, I could. Right. So it said here, uh, clone the repo and run. So I'm going to clean the repo I run. Yes. So and uh, you run git clone, and then you'll have to paste something from here. And you'll find that over here under the code. So yeah. we just copy this, this thing and paste it in here. No, nope, not clone no. the repo and run. <laughs> <laughs> that, was... that would be nice. You used to run the entire yes. instructions. I can paste that then. Yes, like this. We can see it ending with git there. Which yep. Make one slide. And now I forgot what to do, so I'll head back over to the instructions. And it says uh, pip install our requirements. Oh, it actually had uh, even better here. It had here also that you could. Oh, should I done this? Well, let's no, see. No, it shouldn't. Let's see if I what we have here. Oh, I think I should have done it. Put one. He wanted to put it in in a hidden directory. Uh, oh, indeed. Yes, and that was by purpose, I think, uh, because we're saving our password later. So I'm, I'm just going to show you how. You should have copied this link instead of what I did. 
Uh, I should Let's do that. It. I think no, I think you can just do that instead. Ah, all right. So I'll copy this. Head over here. You could just uh, run uh, here. Yes. rm rf as well and delete the past one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, let's start with this. Yeah. And this actually uh, navigated also uh, into the directory. And then we'll maybe this uh, run the pip command above. So we'll grab this, copy, and this will install the Wikibase integrator, I think. So a mm -hmm. little bit of co copy and pasting here in the start. And now I think we're set up uh, software-wise, uh, but we're still uh, one thing left to do. And we're going to have to give this permissions to actually edit in our name. And I think that is explained here somewhere. Like my other tools, copy config example.pi to config.pi and enter the bot username. So I'm just going to copy this again. So three copy and paste. And paste it in here. Nope, that's not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. So it copied and it opened up an editor. And then it wants you to add your username here and your password. And there's also one very good thing that you could do. You could navigate to uh, special of passwords. Yeah, you would even need to do that if you, for example, got two way authentication, I believe. Mm -hmm. Because then you would need a bot password. Yeah. And here it says, you can uh, select a new name here. And if I generate this, it will actually show you the password here on screen. So I don't want, don't want to do that on the screen <laughs> because that will, will be saved and live streamed. But what you do is you enter something here, click create, you get something, you head back over here and paste it here and here. And then you also need to update the username uh, down here. After that, you'll have to save this file and exit. And that one could be a little bit tricky. I thought that was a little bit tricky because uh, saving is right out, which is <clears throat> Control O. So you press Control O and enter, and then Control X to exit. And now you're done after you paste it in, in there. Now I'll see if we have any questions here that uh, a bit fiddly, yes. So now I'm going to switch to a window where I actually already pasted this in. I done the Swedish chef thing and have something prepared. So here I, oh, I'm going to zoom in. I hope zoom in in the right window. There. So here I'm actually in, set up uh, properly. Oh, it's going slow. So now I'm zooming in too much. Is that good? I think that's good. So switching back to the instructions the last time. So what this need uh, for us to do is actually enter some sort of commando here to actually a command to get it started. And then we feed it with a Wikidata item. And then you're thinking, well, what Wikidata item should I feed? And that's, that's where the human come into the loop. So you have to figure out something that could be a good topic for scientific articles or Swedish parliamentarian documents if you want to do this in Swedish and trying to make it as specific as possible. Uh, and there's an example here, like 
if you can try to find the one for metastatic breast cancer instead of just breast cancer, because that will make the the main subjects as uh, specific and uh, in Wikidata. So, uh, and what it will do is it will grab the labels and the aliases and try to match that towards the titles. And that's where we get are getting the help. So I'm going to try here. We have this uh, item for energy consumption uh, and see if we feed in this uh, QID, what do we get? Do we get something that works? So uh, let's see. And once again, this is what we're going to use. So I'll write here the I didn't copy and paste. dot p y dash l and then paste. Was that correct? Yes. So let's try this. And now I have two things to choose from. I or three. I can also exit, <laughs> but I could either run this on. Uh, the scholarly articles in Wikidata or the documents from the Swedish parliament in Wikidata. And it's going to use English if you use it on the scholarly articles, and it's going to use Swedish if you use it on the on the parliament. So we're going to try both. So I'm going to start first with the, I think it's a much smaller data set. So let's try the, uh, the parliament documents first and see what we get. And it's a keep an eye on the lag. Oh, we're just getting started here, so we'll see. And it says, mm -hmm. what does it say? I'm, I think I'm too much zoomed in. I'm going to zoom out once here to get an overview. Ah, there we go. Oh. So found, found 10 items. And then here we see the labels. And I can quickly scan them and see, are these really about energy consumption? And I just scan them all. And yes, they are all about energy consumption. So, so all of these could have this main uh, subject, energy consumption. And then I'll just print Enter again. And if I was in the right window, it will start editing on my behalf. And now we can go and get a cup of coffee or something. Yes. If, if we were, because sometimes you get a lot of good hits. Uh, uh, and sometimes you don't only get like 10. But I guess I, I, I should uh, point out here, there's this, this tool is still very new. So you don't have any choice in, you can either edit all the items or none of them. So if you see that a few of them, these are uh, wrong, perhaps you should change another uh, Wikidata item. Or if it's just one or two, you could, could run it anyway and go back and fix them. But the tricky part is, like if you have 100 items hits, it's only show you the first 50. And then this is to see the trend. Like, is this going to work? Right. And now let's check what it actually did. So if I open this in a new tab, we'll see here that it added a, oh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more here again, like this. I added the main subject, energy consumption, and this based on heuristic inferred from title, because that was sort of what happened. Uh, all right, so that was the first. Uh, so let's try to run the same item, but on the scholarly articles. If you haven't used the terminal a lot before, there's a handy shortcut. You can just press arrow up to see the last uh, command. And now you don't really see it because the StreamYard, ah, there we go. 
And I'll just run this again and we'll get this. Oh, do you want to do the scholarly articles or the Riksdagen? So let's try to go for the scholarly articles and see what we get. And the risk is here that we get too many hits. I, I think it was a large number. So this is 1,400, 1,465 items. So if I were to run this now, I would start an edit batch of 1,400 items. And then I would check this list very carefully to see, am I hitting the only the right things? Because I only get to see the first 50 as well. So this is a little bit of a, I, I, I would hesitate to do this many uh, in a batch, unless I really knew I had something really specific. Energy consumption is a wise it's, term. Yeah, it's a very be, generic term. Yes. I would be more inclined to do this if I had some sort of like a, the Latin name of a species. Because then you would probably be sure that, well, if that's in the title, it will be about that kind of species. Uh, so well, perhaps we should try that, because I think I have one yeah. prepared. Jane actually has a really good point here. I would yes. like to, want to fix 1,400 <laughs> mistakes. And that's a really good point. Generally, yes. you just make as many edits that you are ready to roll back yourself manually. That's yes. good. If you are ready to roll back 100, that, that's great. If you're ready to buy, roll back 200, that's great. But what's your upper limit? You need to ask yourself that. Yeah. Luckily, this tool is using edit groups. So you could roll, roll, back, roll them back all in a batch. But uh, even so, you would have, if you didn't figure it out from the first 50, it's probably not all you want to as well. So that's a tricky thing. Uh, and I think this, like, I, we sometimes talk about that on wiki, on wiki projects, you don't really have any obligations to do stuff. Like we're here of our free wills and we are volunteers. But I think this is sort of one of the community culture rules that we do have. That is that if you run a bot and make a lot of trouble, you should fix it. So that's sort of the exception to that rule. So yeah. trying to make here, but let's try here. We have this is a this is a crab. We have a picture here. This is an invasive species in the Europe. So I bet uh, there are some things written about it. So let's see. So we'll copy the Latin name because I think there wouldn't be a lot other things about not being about this crab in a scientific article with the title of this crab. That, that would, seems very unlikely. So from this one, uh, I'm going to quit for now. So I'm going to press Control C and quit. Uh, oh, and I did uh, unnecessary. I shouldn't copy this one. I should copy the QID. So let's copy the QID. Go back here, change the Q label, paste and see what we get. And now, I'm, I'm now I dare to start with the scholarly articles. And press start here. Ooh oh, yes. And here it also showed you like, it also using the Japanese shore crab and the Asian shore crab from the aliases which is really useful. But I've noticed that if you run this for some plants, some of the plants have really generic and common names. So you get a lot of uh, false hits. Then there is actually, a, uh, you can write dash NA. Well, let me just show you that immediately. So I'll press Control C here, edit out. If I here add dash NA, it means no aliases. That was not how you wrote it. It should come after, All right? At least I got a good error message. 
and go with one again. And now we should only have one thing here, only the Latin name instead of all three. Yes. And done, we only found 32 instead of 47. And let's see. Does this seem to be the right kind of things? Crabs, shore crabs. All right, very interesting. Cool, cool papers. I wanna read some of these, but for now I'm just gonna edit <laughs> the main <laughs> subjects. So I'll press enter here. And it'll go do 32 edits for me. And now we could almost go get some coffee here because this is, well, it's pretty quick, but it's still. Uh, is it, is it using like your account or a bot or what does it do behind the scenes? So this is using my account. Uh, now I do have the flood flag. So I, I think I have a little bit of more uh, thing. Uh, yeah, a bit of a higher edit rate. Yeah. But, but for a regular user, there could be quite a lag on like 10 seconds in between every edit. Mm -hmm. uh, if you aren't using your bot account, which we for this, I believe, would recommend. Indeed. Or or, or if you get go get the flood flag, which uh, you also can do if you do a lot of automated yeah. editing with tools like this, which aren't really uh, like, it's not really bot bot thing, but it's somewhere in the gray zone in between there. <laughs> I think it still would show up in the recent edits, for example, which I don't think bots do by default. Yeah, yes. I, I, I don't know, but uh, we could look. Let's see. No, we Indeed could. We could. I, th oh, we I think we're too late now. Oh. Uh, I think, I mean, the edit rate is so high <laughs> on, on Wikidata. Oh, indeed. Yes. In Wikidata wouldn't be the easiest place to Look into that. Yeah. Let's try this. I don't think we're going to get anything on on in in the Swedish Parliament. I I expect they haven't talked about this crab in the in the Parliament. But let's see. You never know. No. So then you see you get a total of zero items. No matching items found. That's a little bit unfortunate. They should be more worried. <laughs> and did I have? Um... Yes, I had another thing uh, as an example here of how you could think about doing this. Um, uh, this is a, a preview of what we're going to do next week a little bit. Uh, we have a small data set that we're going to use next week. But I'm just going to copy something here. Like, Let's take this. These are our agencies in Sweden. And the first column has their names. So I'm just going to copy one of these public agencies and see the Wikidata item for that. And here we have that one. And then we'll head back over here and we'll plug it in here. Now I think we're going to see the opposite. So I don't expect a lot of scientific articles about this public agency in Sweden, but I do expect a lot of people in the parliament having opinions on it. Uh, but it also, this is the, the Crime Prevention Council. So it might be some like about crime in Sweden papers. So we, let's see, let's write the scholarly articles first. Now, zero, zero uh, items found. I find, find this a little bit like sort of a, a mini game for myself to come up with topics that someone has written. And this is the like sort of the game, uh, old school. Uh, 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 uh. All right. So here we got 16 hits in the Swedish parliament documents. I'm just quickly going to scan this. I'm pretty sure these are. All correct, yes. So I'll just run this. Let's see. I, we have a question here. What is your go-to Wikidata URL for pasting in a string and getting a list of numeric codes and can add? 
have that meta tag if it doesn't already. So we assuming that the meta tag is the HTML meta tag doesn't really use them that way. I guess one here is asking for all the external properties for a specific item. Uh, yes. I would assume that. So would this be sort of, well, let's show um, um, the tool you built last week and see if this is what it does and uh, yeah do you have it around i ha i have the tool around here so we, 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 let's also uh, do something now well, this is a little bit of a deviation but we'll, we'll head over here to uh, the, the the gov directory We'll go to Sweden and we'll find uh, something that doesn't already have, but could have social media accounts. Something like um, the Swedish Institute for Europolitic Studies might have it. They do have a website. So let's see. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> yes, you, you should write your Swedish ambassador. Uh, now let's see, CIPS, uh, if they do have any social media accounts and then we can showcase this. Yes, so they seem to be having... No, this is for sharing. Yes, there's a sharing links. Uh, maybe they don't have anything. That was a, a bad hit then. Try one of the Norwegian embassies. You, you think they are good? Yeah, they usually have very prominent social media on their All web right. page as well. So let's head over to Norway. If the embassies are here. Yes, the embassies are here. So let's go for the embassy in Berlin. They're probably busy because there's an election going on there yeah. tomorrow. They don't even have a website. Oh, that's interesting. Let's take Bern. No. Ankara. Wait. No. That seems odd. Now I got Mexico something City. to investigate. Yes, not nothing in Mexico City. Oh, it's... something is broken. Oh, no. I would assume Let's check that. someone that has something here then. Yeah. Indonesia. Oh, they do have one. Okay, interesting, interesting. Yeah, if we... They have like a section here now, a bit down. They should Yes, have. embassy on Twitter here. Yeah. So if we go here, here's the URL. And if we head to their Wikidata item with this auto identifier input, I can just paste the entire URL as a string and press add. And it added the Twitter identifier. What that's what you were asking after for, Anne? I, I might have to reload to see it. Now it's in here. I'm not sure I, if if we asked the question, but I can also show you where. There is a slightly warning about this auto-identifier input. It's that it only works with a few social media platforms currently, mm -hmm. uh, because I haven't had the time to make it work yes. with everything. Yeah. 
And, and to install it, uh, you have to borrow a, a code snippet. This is the code snippet. Um, the Alvin wrote this little thing, and I thought it was very handy. All right, uh, let's see how the edit gun it's done. So yeah, the tool itself, it's uh, quite easy once you get started. And I have to warn you a little bit, it's also a little bit addictive because it's very fun trying to figure out like what is a topic that is something that people write scientific articles and put in the title and something that is uh, something that we would like to tag them with that would be helpful for anyone else. Trying to figure that out, that's a little sort of a mini game in itself. And then it takes away all the boring stuff of edit, editing. <laughs> so you only need to do the fun stuff of actually thinking, which is, of course, what we humans are good at. So that's uh, like, don't do the boring stuff and press buttons. Do the fun stuff. And, and press and buttons. <laughs> yeah. Watch your buttons. Yes, press other buttons. And of course, there were some buttons you needed to uh, press in the beginning. But I think with the help of the written instructions, and if you go back and watch this video, uh, you should be able to get started. And if you have any trouble, you're free to uh, ping me on any platform on Wiki or Telegram or wherever you are. And I think also the, the author of this tool, the user SO9Q would be very happy if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions for improving the, uh, he's very responsive on GitHub. So uh, I think that's really nice. And I think that's all because not doing anything more, I think that would just be repeating and, <laughs> and <laughs> Uh, that will be tedious. I think I've showed what the tool can do and uh, the possibilities. Yeah. And next week there will also be a bit of pause because we will use Uber Refine. Should we share something already on that? What is Uber Refine, Jan? Open Refine is a very handy tool for if you have a data set outside of Wikidata. Like a CSV use... file. Yeah, a CSV file, or it could be an other formats as well. Yeah. I will show some sort of spreadsheet. But And you want to combine data with that, with Wikidata. And for our purposes, we're also going to show you how to edit or put things back into Wikidata. But OpenRefine could be useful just for matching things with Wikidata and go do some things anywhere else. It's very useful squeeze army knife of the yeah. of, of things you can do but we're going to focus specifically on finding something out there that has a proper license or in other ways could be useful for wikidata finding how do we get it in there and also <laughs> make the final push of getting it in there <laughs> that, that's a really nice word i think the, the swiss army knife reference is a really nice one and we will actually do this entirely on pause so that people don't need to install Uber Refine or anything like that. We'll just get this is how you get started from importing a file like some open data we found somewhere to importing it that into Wikidata. Um, yeah. So, so that it will be next week. So you'll have mm -hmm. to tune in then. And I will remember to actually create the stream and not like this week when I forgot it <laughs> and we just popped up. But at least yeah. seemed like 10 people found us. So we are on schedule. People know we are on. Great. Yeah, eight next week. Yes. And until then, happy editing. Happy editing. Mm -hmm.